Okay, so we're making another Philadelphia Flyers video. We kind of have to. There's so much conversation going on about this entire situation that it would be kind of irresponsible not to bring it up, at least. So we are revisiting the trade from yesterday once again. We had talked about this in yesterday's show as well as today's show. We already talked about the idea of the Philadelphia Flyers not sending away top prospect Cutter Gauthier to the Montreal Canadiens. But in this video, we are focusing solely on the Philadelphia Flyers and their relationship with this player. Because more and more information is coming out that paints both sides, honestly, in a really bad light. So, this is the third video about this player in the past 24 hours and, like, the fifth video about this guy within the past few weeks, so I probably don't need to go over the scouting report much more, but the guy is a top prospect. He was a fifth overall pick by the Flyers in this 2022 draft, but when it comes to him... Getting drafted, being a part of the organization, eventually deciding not to participate in training camp earlier this year, which we did talk about, and eventually seeing him ghost the entire Philadelphia Flyers organization at the World Juniors, the Flyers had no choice but to trade this guy away. Take a look at the tweets going out there and describing the situation here. Dan Abrier said that Cutter Goche informed the team after the Worlds last summer that he didn't want to be a Flyer. They gave him space and were hoping he would change his mind. But he stopped talking to the Flyers camp and he wouldn't meet with them at the World Juniors. So they made the trade. There also was a video posted by Elite Prospects where Cutter Goche himself says that he was a Flyers fan growing up, and because he was drafted by the Flyers, he doesn't think that's going to go over well. That was from earlier this week. Andy and Rono goes out there and replies to this video saying, hey, didn't the Flyers know that before they drafted Goche? There are always thousands of questions for every prospect. Did they not really know that he's a big Penguins fan? I, Rono, wanted David Yerichek over Goche at the time, and if they knew that and still drafted him, then what the heck? Another tweet on the matter said that Cutter Goche refused to speak to John LeClaire and Patrick Sharp. He was said to have wanted nothing to do with anyone in the Philadelphia Flyers organization. Now, there also was another thing that was reported with former Philadelphia Flyers forward Kevin Hayes. It was reported that apparently he was involved in making Cutter Goche not want to play for the Philadelphia Flyers, but Kevin Hayes himself completely debunked that afterwards in a very angry way. He was really not happy in being dragged into this entire fire by some of the guys who were on TV, actually. This was talked about on the NBC intermission, I'm pretty sure. But either way, a lot of this stuff that we're talking about so far, it's all from yesterday. When it comes to what's happened today, we had ourselves an Elliot Friedman quote from The Jeff Merrick Show going over a few extra things that add a little bit more light to the conversation. Here's the quote from NHL Watcher. Friedman says this, I do think at the end of his season last year in school, there was a conversation about turning pro, and from what I understand, the Flyers said they couldn't do it at the time because his bonuses would have put them over the cap and they didn't want there to be an overage this year. I can't say for sure because nobody is talking here, but one of the theories is that, for whatever reason, Goche took that as a sign that they weren't willing to take him right away, or they weren't enthusiastic about taking him right away and it might be broken telephone. But it's the best explanation I've got so far. And so now we're not just hearing that, oh, it's Cutter Goche is a Penguins fan and he doesn't want to play for the Flyers, or that he really just didn't want to play with them at all this entire time and he hid it until now. We're also hearing that apparently Philadelphia did not want to sign him at the end of last season due to salary cap constraints, and there may be some version of the world out there where Cutter Goche took that as a sign that they weren't ready to commit to him. Of course, not trying to put words in anybody's mouth, but it would be a reasonable conclusion to make if a top prospect who is very good at hockey and who is a talented player would feel a little bit offset by their team not wanting to sign them right away when the prospect themselves was ready to sign. I could understand why that would be seen as a slight, but if there was some sort of miscommunication here where the Flyers just wanted to sign him, but they couldn't, they need to let him know, dude. Like, they need to say, hey, we want to sign you, we want to get this done, we want to get your ELC on the books, but we can't. Like, our salary cap is too tight right now, and your bonuses would conflict with that. I'm sure there would be some sort of a human element where it's like, okay, well, they're telling me why. 
this broken telephone game, nonsense going back and forth, yada, 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 things get broken up and told wrongly to the next party. That's not acceptable for a professional hockey league organization. And you could even say that the status of them wanting to sign a guy, they want to sign a guy who wants to sign with them, reportedly at least. Let's just base that off of the idea that this took place last year in the summer. Like... The fact that you're not able to appease both parties and commit to your future because of a few bonuses on your salary cap, like how are you not able to get that done? How are you not able to move things around or get somebody on the LTIR? You have LTIR room being used up. Ryan Ellis has been on there forever and he's gonna stay there. Like, how is there not a world where the Philadelphia Flyers are able to get bonuses covered on their entire salary cap structure, and it costs them the commitment from one of their top prospects that they were investing so much emotion and time resources into. Now, things get even crazier when you talk about just the holistic picture. Here's a thread on the R Hockey sub. It goes over that same Kevin Hayes stuff that we had talked about earlier. The Kevin Hayes quote is on the screen here. I think it's complete BS. I think those guys acted like complete pieces of blank, making blank up. He was angry, the fact that he was dragged into this entire thing. And one of the top comments goes out there and summarizes everything, just so it's on the screen, so it's easier to absorb. Forgetful Fever goes out there and says, what an effing mess. And then Sir Hellas replies, context? So, Inject A24 into my veins goes out there and says, by the way, A24, shout out to them. So the Flyers traded one of their best prospects yesterday, seemingly out of nowhere. And of course, when something like this happens, rumors start to go as to why. Here are the facts. 1. Danny Briere said that they traded Goche because he did not want to sign with the Flyers. 2. Flyers management said he refused to talk to them during the World Juniors. 3. Cutter Goche said on a podcast once that Kevin Hayes reached out to him after the draft and they have gone golfing. 4. Kevin Hayes has been relatively outspoken about not being happy with his tenure with the Flyers. And then 5. Keith Jones, the Flyers president of hockey operations, said that Kevin Hayes called him and told him that he was not involved. The rumors. Kevin Hayes was chirping in Goche's ear about how much he disliked the Flyers organization. Two, people close to Goche have said that the new GM and coaching is why he didn't want to be a Flyer. Other rumors that have circulated around was that the Flyers organization wanted him to play some more developmental hockey and he was unhappy about that and that Goche wanted to be closer to home, so that's why he wants Anaheim. And so that's all the information laid out in one comment. It's easier to absorb here. It's just kind of a big mess, a big web of different people and different ideas and different, you know, kind of philosophies on the Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, Kevin Hayes doesn't like the team. That's why he may have told the prospect not to sign there. But no, the prospect just doesn't like the coaching. Like John Tortorella had some comments about Kevin Hayes, or not Kevin Hayes, excuse me, Tortorella had some comments about Cutter Goche as well. He said essentially that he didn't really care and that he wants to talk more so about Jamie Drysdale coming back the other way, who is the player that's actually going to affect the Flyers long term. So things are kind of a mess when you talk about this entire Cutter Goche situation. There are so many thoughts and ideas floating around. This is a response on that subreddit comment that we were looking at. This is the best recap I've seen of the situation. The rumor has legs, true or not. There's some smoke, but who the F knows unless Goche says one way or another himself. Yeah, there's definitely some meat there, and with no word from Goche's camp, all people have is conjecture. And yes, the death threats are embarrassing, rumor true or not. And that's referring to Kevin Hayes getting called out, because once Kevin Hayes' name got involved, once he was called out on Philadelphia Flyers broadcasting that he might have been involved, apparently he received death threats, and that's really not cool. Guys, don't do that. That's not really appropriate. So, either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Kevin Hayes not Kevin Hayes, Cutter Goche situation with the Flyers. This is just a boatload of information, way too many screenshots. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as to what you think happened or what makes the most sense to you. And if what happened did happen, what are your thoughts about that? Also, if you're a Flyers fan, things are probably going to be fine with Jamie Drysdale. You saw the video we made yesterday about the entire trade. I think Drysdale's going to be great with this Flyers team, but I cannot shake the discomfort that I feel most people are feeling as well in regards to the way Cutter Gocha ended up leaving. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.